So before I get started showing all the different types of head configurations, just a quick background. These heads read the video tracks on a videotape, as uh, shown in the orange and blue on the screen. Uh, the control track at the bottom is unrelated. Audio track at the top for linear audio is unrelated. And we are concerned with the video heads themselves. Uh, there's two properties to the video heads. There's the head width and the head gap. The head gap on each opposing head is at an opposing angle or azimuth. In the case of VHS, plus six degrees, minus six degrees. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of this, but it's basically to eliminate crosstalk between the two adjacent tracks. Uh, but what we're concerned with is head width in this case. And uh, just as a quick background, this diagram here, the angle of the video tracks versus the tape itself is called the helix angle. Helix angle I'm showing here is completely wrong. It's just for demonstration purposes. It looks closer to this, but the problem with this is I can't show a whole video track. So this helix angle is not going to be shown. Helix angle is also affected by the tape speed itself. So as you slow down or speed up the tape with different play and record speeds or using special effects, fast forward, rewind, scan, or even pause, you change the angle. So I'm not going to get into details with that yet, but uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. First up, the most basic head configuration, two video heads. Take a look at the head drum here. You'll see there's one head and the other head here, head A, head B. And uh, you can tell um, it's two heads because you have three screws, three screw holes or adjustment holes above each head. Don't mess with the adjustments, that just, just don't. You'll never need to in your life. Um, but yeah, this is a very basic configuration, the minimum required to playback uh, video and what the original VHS spec was built around. Downsides, this doesn't take into account special effects, fast forward, rewind, scan, pause. It also doesn't take into account different play and record speeds. So for example, if you have multiple record speeds, you now need a head width that can support those multiple record speeds. You can't have a head width too wide, you know, configured more for SP, because then it's going to have trouble playing and recording the slower speeds that have a narrower track width, that need a narrower head. So on most two head models that support multiple video record speeds, you're going to have a narrower head width than uh, would be ideal for, say, playing back and recording SP. What that means, this will play and record SLP or EP just fine, and it'll work with SP, but the quality of the playback on SP won't be as good. It won't be optimized for SP. Second problem, special effects. These heads, like I said, the angle when these heads are hitting the tape changes depending on the speed. So when you have a narrow tape head and you're playing back SP, and then you hit pause, suddenly the angle changes. Now you have this narrow head that's not able to capture as much information as a fully wide head. So you're already at a disadvantage because your tape speed has changed. Now you're at a double disadvantage because your head is narrower. So you're gonna get a lot of noise on the picture. Same thing for with fast forward and rewind scan. You're gonna get a lot of noise on the picture. Now uh, with SLP or EP, you're going to get a lot less noise because the head width is more tuned to the recording speed or the track width, but it's still not going to be great. You're still going to be getting flickering and jittering, and that's because you are paused and you are constantly flickering between two different heads that play back two different fields of video, and one of them is going to be hitting the tape or the track a little bit better than the other, so it's not going to be great. It'll be better, but in both scenarios, special effects won't be fantastic on this. How do you support optimal quality for two playback speeds? You add two more heads. So that's what they did. This is a model that has four video heads. As you can see, they're still at opposing eight angles, 180 degrees from each other. So there's two and there's two more. So the way this VCR works is depending on what speed you're playing back, it will use different heads to play back that video or different heads to record if you're recording. The SP uh, optimized heads will be wider, and this varies from manufacturer to manufacturer what the actual width is. Same thing with the EP heads. They can range from 
I think the older machines were like 20 to 31 microns in width and SP ranged from 38 all the way up to like 70 or 90 for, for maybe one of the SP heads. Different heads sometimes like uh, one would be a different width than the other for trying to optimize with special effects. But the long and short of it is the SP heads are wider, the EP heads are narrower. This means that you get your best quality you can playing back SP while still being able to play back EP with the narrower heads. This did improve special effects on SP as well, because again, your head is a proper width, but only as good as the special effects were on say like a two head with EP. They still weren't great. Your screen wasn't completely full of noise, but it wasn't hundred percent. But this is a good step to being able to properly support two video speeds. But what about special effects? What if you want to get better special effects? Well, they added one head to a two head configuration to add this special trick or special effects playback head. If you take a look here, you have one head on one side, you have two on the other. And if you notice, these two heads are right in the same spot. They're basically built into each other. And this is what's known as a um, dual azimuth configuration meaning that on this side, these two heads read the opposite azimuth to each other. So one way to describe it is this is head A, this is head B, and this is head A prime. A prime being 180 degrees away from it, but recording and playing the same azimuth. What this means is when you're say paused, A and A prime are being used to display the video information. So A will read, the, A will read one field, and then a prime will read the same field on the videotape. So you're not gonna be jittering back and forth. These are both gonna to work together to show you one field of video. So you're not gonna get that interlacing jitter. And uh, usually this trick head is a little bit wider to be able to get more information. So you're going to get excellent pause, excellent fast forward and rewind scan on both speeds. But this doesn't give you any benefit for playback. You're still only playing back with two heads, A and B. So what if I want optimized playback and recording quality for both speeds, and I want good special effects? Well, combine the two. Give yourself five heads. This is a five video head head drum, and you can see you'll have your SP heads and your EP heads or SLP heads, and then your fifth head for trick playback. Now this one is in a 90 degree configuration, whereas that other one I showed, I think it was like 15 or 20 degrees off. Uh, different manufacturers had them at different angles. It really didn't matter for a four head model. For five heads, when you get into the trick playback, I believe these had to be 90 degrees out. That's why they're in this, this pattern. But this gave you the best of both worlds. This gave you good special effects, and this also gave you optimized uh, quality on both speeds. But it's kind of expensive having five separate, or I guess four separate heads, one of which is a combination of two. This is pretty expensive to manufacture. There's got to be a cheaper way to do it. What if I combined a three head and a four head VCR together in a different way? So instead of having five heads, I have four heads, but I have two in a dual azimuth configuration and two more in a dual azimuth configuration. Then side by side, I set them up for the widths of SP and EP. What this means is that I have four playback and record heads. So I get optimized playback and record on both speeds, but I also get trick heads and I get two trick heads. So with a bit of logic inside the VCR, it can go and pick and choose which head gives it the least amount of noise, has the best signal, and you end up with a four head dual azimuth or four DA head. These are the most common four head VCR you will see out there. Once we got into the 90s, um, pretty much all other configurations other than two head and four head dual azimuth were dead. Uh, so a non dual azimuth four head, very uncommon three head, five head, also very uncommon. This was sort of the final design that gave the best optimization. It was the most cost-effective, 
it gave the best of both worlds. And so, yeah, almost all forehead VCRs out there, especially nowadays, are, you'll, that you'll find are going to be forehead dual azimuth like this. Now, I just want to mention the Hi-Fi audio heads. They exist on the same video head drum as the video heads. And uh, all the configurations that I've already shown were available in Hi-Fi. My little graphics all showed the Hi-Fi head location. But honestly, they're pretty rare. Um, the most common Hi-Fi models I've seen were the, either some higher-end five-head models or your four-head dual azimuth. Two-head Hi-Fi existed, very uncommon. Three-head Hi-Fi existed, very uncommon. Four-head non-dual azimuth, also pretty uncommon, but they did exist. But here's an example of a four-head dual azimuth, and it's got these little Hi-Fi heads on the side here. The way hi-fi worked is because it ran, was at a lower frequency, it would essentially record deeper into the magnetic tape than the higher frequency video information. So they used something called record under that would record the audio first, then the video over top. And the video wouldn't completely overwrite the audio that was already underneath. That's a very, very uh, simplified explanation of it. but. Uh, the advantage is you get the same or similar bandwidth to video for audio, so the audio is excellent. And one other thing I want to mention, sometimes a 4-head plus hi-fi VCR will be called 6-head. It's not as common in North America, but I see a lot of uh, European models that would say 6-head, and a lot of cheap manufacturers would say 6-head, and what they meant was 4 video plus the 2 hi-fi. I completely disagree with that. As far as I'm concerned, the head count should only be for video. Uh, six head models do exist, but they are not this one. This is a four head plus hi-fi model. This is a six head VCR, a proper six head VCR. You have your video heads, your dual azimuth four video heads. You have your hi-fi and you have two additional heads here. So what are these for? Well, it's all down to head width again. So if you look at the VHS spec, the width of a track for EP is 19 micron. So later in the 90s, when technology and tape formulations and everything got better, there was this new trend of 19 micron heads. Well, what does that mean? It means that your EP heads are very narrow, narrower than the typical 25 to 30 micron. The advantage is you get less noise because you can narrow, you can get right narrow on the video track. The downside is stuff that was recorded with the old wider EP heads wouldn't play as well on the newer 19 micron heads. So for a short while in the mid 90s, manufacturers sold six head VCRs that had two sets of EP heads, your traditional EP heads and your 19 micron heads. Eventually, they just went back to the 4DA configuration that uh, you had SP and then you had your 19 micron EP heads. But six head VCRs for six video heads did exist. And uh, yeah, kind of a gimmick, but uh, there you go. One more thing I'd like to briefly mention is what's called a flying erase head. And that is basically when an erase head is added to the video head drum itself. You can see here. There is the forehead dual azimuth, there's your hi-fi, and there's this additional head right here. And that's what's called a flying erase head. Flying, I guess, because it's flying along like this with the video heads. So why is that useful? Well, it has to do with how a VCR records onto a tape and the position of all these pieces. So the first piece that touches the tape as it passes through a little M configuration here is this erase head. It's called the full erase head. It erases the entire width of the tape. So the tape is now empty. Tape is traveling through. This empty tape gets recorded on with the spinning head drum. So the video information or hi-fi audio, well, and hi-fi audio information if it's available is recorded helically, so at an angle. Then it goes past this head here. This is the linear audio head, control track head, and audio erase head. So if you take a look, there's a little head on the top of the silver thing, that's your audio. 
little head on the bottom, that's your control track uh, head. And if I can kind of get it shown here, see that little shiny piece at the top of that black head? That is your audio erase head. Why is there an audio erase head? Well, the video head has just recorded across basically the entire tape. It's just swiped right across it, right? So you don't have a nice, fresh erased tape. You have a bunch of crap on it. And if you record over stuff that's already recorded, you're not going to get the best quality. You really want to properly erase the tape before applying any information. It'll still work. It just won't work as well. And when it comes to analog linear audio, you kind of want the best. This erases that little track before you record onto it. For the control track pulse, it doesn't really matter. It just, VCR just has to be able to read it. It's not like a audio quality thing, so it doesn't really need to be erased again. It can just go right over top of the information. But again, why is a flying erase head important? Well, if I put a tape in here and I hit record, there is tape that goes from here all the way around and when you hit record, it will start recording at an angle along this tape. So there's a section of tape here that isn't erased that you're recording on top of. Now, I don't know the technical reason why, but this really seems to have a negative effect on the color. When you're recording the color information over the old one, it bleeds through and you get that sort of rainbow effect. And that rainbow effect will peel down as this head drum records more and more onto it, again at an angle, that's why it's peeling down. So what a flying erase head does, it erases the information on the tape right before it's recorded. And this is very useful for editing. If you want to insert some video, you don't want to have this weird angled mess of extra chroma information causing a bunch of color on the screen. So a flying erase head really helps with being able to just hit record and it inserts the video information right there. Oh, and while I'm at it, I've been meaning to do this. I haven't had this thing open in a while. There, be gone with you. Into the pile.